Okay, so where we left off, we were playing with color, or we were setting up to do color options within Illustrator. And the reason for wanting to color in the vector program, whether it's vector online or whether it's Illustrator, is that way you can color individual paths differently. Whereas if you do the, uh, the vector file into Photoshop, and then you just do layer styles on the EPS vector file, which is the best practice, you can add a color to everything. You can add a drop shadow to everything, but you can't color individual parts without first rasterizing them. And rasterizing them breaks, breaks the vector, right? So this is how we can color within Illustrator. The problem is we opened this file in Illustrator and it was only a one color file. And so what Illustrator did is it set itself up right from opening to be in a, in a limited uh, setup, which doesn't allow for color, even though it looks like it would allow for color. So if we select everything by drawing a box around it with the large selection tool, and then we change the fill, you'll notice there's no options for the fill. It's just a question mark. Or if we double click on the fill box, it will show us all the colors. And I usually, within Illustrator, limit things to web colors. But when I click one and say OK, it's not magenta at all. Instead, it's the gray value of that magenta. So that's frustrating, right? So what do we need to do? Well, we need to select it all. You need to make sure everything is unlocked because it can't select anything that's locked and we've deleted anything that we didn't want showing anyway i mean actually we didn't delete these things but it's okay because they're they're turned off so what we're going to do now is we're going to copy them all so edit copy and then we are going to close this file And then we're going to open a new Illustrator file. Not from anywhere, but just new. We want it to be a print profile. And I'm going to call this my color logo. So Carl Assignment 6 color logo test. Whereas before, remember I always called it a black vector. Now the color that Illustrator uses by default is CMYK color. And that's important. We'll talk about that later. Okay, but I just want you to use all the defaults for now. Now I'm going to see edit paste in place. And it looks like nothing happened, right? But if you remember, we placed our file way off of the artboard. Now, while it's all selected, I'm going to move it back onto the artboard. Doesn't really matter where. but just so I can see it cleanly on white. Now you'll see when I select it, whether I select all of it or just select part of it, and I click on the color options, I have a whole lot of options. Not only do I have solid color options, but I have, depends on the version of Illustrator you have, I have patterned colors, I have gradation options, of various types that can all be modified, right? So what would be interesting? Well, first of all, what's the the best benefit of Illustrator of doing color in a vector program? It's that I can color each element individually. So I'm gonna pick a different color. I'm gonna kind of gradate the blue by actual color selection as I go down. And then I can use the eyedropper tool to steal the color that I've used somewhere else. So I'm just selecting these various things. If I want the color to match, I use the eyedropper. If I want to select multiples, I can hold down shift, right? Then use the eyedropper or just select a new, a new blue.
This allows me to color each path separately. And then if I want more control, I can double click here. And like I said, I like to use web colors, but I don't have to. I can go to the, the full color selection. Um, that's available anywhere, like in Photoshop. Okay, so let's say that this is my color solution. That's great. I can do those exact same things in the vector program. But I might as well save that. So that's my first option, right? And notice I didn't save it as an EPS. I saved it as an AI file. That just means an Adobe Illustrator file, a working file format. Okay, now because I, I opened it up, everything is all in one layer again. You know, all this stuff, all in one layer. So what I can do is take that one layer, copy it, and paste it into a new layer. So make a new layer, lock the one before, turn it off so you can see what I'm doing, and then say edit, paste in place. And that's just like hitting Command J in Photoshop. I just duplicated everything. This allows me now to play with the color even more. So this time, I'm going to take all of these. And then I am going to um, fill them with a gradation. So how do I select them all? I can draw a box around them all. And under my options here, I can pick one of the gradients, maybe a blue gradient. If I want more options than that, because that's just a straight side to side gradient, I have to go to my windows or my specialized tools on the side here. And I have to find gradient turn that on right and it shows up here make make sure you guys are able to see it so here under gradient similar to photoshop i can build my own i can add my own colors like i can throw a little bit of purple into there and then I can also set the, op the opacity of it at different amounts. Right? And I can move it around. And I can change the angle. So it's, it's a lot like the gradient options within Photoshop, but they just look different. You know, they're a little bit more antiquated just because Illustrator is an older program. If I want to change a color, I can certainly do that. That looks kind of nice. All right. And I can make the whole of the gradient less opaque, right, at, at each color. So I actually have it fading out to zero here. But I should probably have that fade to maybe 10%. So there's a little bit of color still at the edge. Okay, so that's a gradient solution. Now, if I layer them up, I get this. Because remember, this was at lower opacity. So this is without the gradients. This is with the gradients layered on top. And that's kind of nice. looks pretty slick. Now, if... I want to just play with the transparency without having to do it with each gradient. I can go to the window for transparency. And then I can just select the whole layer and just take its transparency down more and more and more. So the gradient's there, but it's so subtle. So I find like kind of the right amount just to make it seem really, really sophisticated. 
Now, the beauty of vectors and digital is they make perfect copies, right? So I can select all of that and copy it, make a new layer, edit, paste in place. And this time, I'm just going to fill it with a fire gradient. And I'm going to set the angle. See, to 45 degrees. And I could even try it radial. That doesn't look very good, but you have those options, right? And then under transparency, I'm going to take it down only 20%. Now, orange and blue are complementary colors, so it's going to deaden everything a little bit. But I kind of like the intensity it gives to it in some places. And then I might decide to lock that open up my other gradient, select it, and play with its overall opacity, maybe bring it up a little bit more. So I get that, that side light. So all these options. All right, now this happens a lot when you're adding color to something. You'll create, especially digitally, you'll create lots of options. So I'm going to unmute you guys, and we are recording for the YouTube channel. But I want you to do what I usually use um, my friends and whoever is next to me to do. So what do you like better? Do you like this, or do you like this? This, or this? So chime in that one the all blue one the all blue yeah the all blue does give off a more cooler vibe if you ask me yeah it definitely feels like water more right yeah okay so complexity and i agree complexity is not always best but it's fun to know how to do it and so even though in illustrator you can add a lot of color options it doesn't mean it's always the best choice because what do we want from our logos? We want them to be simple, clear, and versatile. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Notice I just turned off the options. I don't need to delete them. I can just turn them off. And then I'm going to save this as my color EPS file to the desktop. I'm going to keep all the defaults. Now remember how I said it was CMYK? We're going to learn what that means. Gonna bring it in. There's my AI. Then under documents is my EPS. So I've got all of these different options. Now if I go back to my Photoshop file, the one where I did the black PSD, so it's right here. What I can do is bring in that EPS right on top of my black. Now this is different than just adding colors as effects, right? This is bringing in a colored vector. And because it's from Illustrator, it has all of these gradations in it already. Okay, so this is it on its own. This is it on a gray background. This is it on a white background, right? So let's keep it on white for now. And then I can decide, do I want those effects? And I think I do. So how can I move these effects to here? Well, I can simply drag and drop them and move them. But I want those effects as an option on the black as well. So what do I do? I hit, this is within Photoshop. I hit Command J to duplicate them and then move them and then delete the duplicate. So I've got all of that. I could still use the effects within Photoshop to augment that. So I could put a color over everything in Photoshop, like gray it out, but just at a different opacity. I could also put a gradient on it in Photoshop. Let's do a rainbow for some iridescence. 